Hi everyone, in this video I am going to take up questions related to methods and functions. This topic is covered in two videos, so stay till the end of the video to fully grasp the topic. And we have some interesting exercises at the end of the video to check your progress. So let's begin. Okay, the first thing which we are going to understand is what are methods. Now here uh, a method, what is a method? A method is a named piece of code in a program. This definition we have covered earlier also in the previous video also. So uh, uh, in the previous video the definition was slightly different but here we have given a new definition. You can give whichever definition you are comfortable with. So a uh, method is a named piece of a code in a program. It is also known as a member function and the behavior of an object is represented through methods. I think this is a definition which we covered in the previous video. So whichever definition you want to learn you can learn and you need not write both the definitions. One is this a method is a named piece of code in a program and the other one is the behavior of an object is represented through method. Now next question is what is the advantage of methods? Now the advantage of methods, some of the advantages I'm uh, listing here, uh, they allow reuse of code. That means we can use the code again and they provide abstraction. That means hiding the details uh, from the end user and they provide modularity. So these are the three advantages or what are the uses of methods? So we can write this answer. Now next is how are methods defined? That means what is the way to define the method? So here in this, uh, I'm going to explain what are the ways of defining a method. Whenever we define a method, these are the things which we specify and this is the order. The order, order will remain the same. And just uh, remember that this square bracket, so whatever is written in square bracket, as I've told you here, is optional. Okay, so access specifiers are optional, modifiers are optional, but the return type, whenever you define a method, return type you have to give, it is not optional, followed by method name, again it is not optional, and in the brackets, round brackets or round parenthesis, we will give parameter list. Now parameter list may or may not be there. So now we will take up some examples of method definition. So if you see this first example which I have written here, here we have written public. Public is an access specifier. Then we have written final. Final is a modifier. Then we have written void. Void is the return type. We will discuss the meaning of void in uh, a little later. And then sum. Sum is the name of the method. And then within the parenthesis I have given parameters. Here I have given two parameters. See, comma separated list, two parameters and with each parameter you would specify the data type and the name. So the first parameter is int a and the second parameter is double b. So the parameters can be as many as we want but they should be separated by a comma and they should be, we should have to specify uh, the data type and the name of the parameter. Now then the second example which we have taken, if you can see that we have written private. Private is again an access specifier, but we have not given any modifier here. That means this is optional as I told you, so we have not given it. And uh, then we have given the return type which is void, then the name of the method is cal. And within the parenthesis I am giving one parameter, the data type of the parameter is cal, and the name of the parameter we have written as ch. Now in the third example we again have void. Void is a return type. So that means we have not given access specifier here, we have not given modifier here. So we are giving return type, the method name is max and how many parameters are we passing? 1, 2 and 3. So int a, comma int b, comma int c. Now in the last example if you see we have given the return type, return type is int, the name of the parameter, uh, the name of the method is show and parenthesis that means no parameters are being passed here. And uh, I've given here a list of some of the modifiers, so this question can be asked name a few modifiers. So some of the modifiers are final, static, transient and volatile. Okay, you just need to learn the names. Of course, final we have already discussed what is the final keyword and static keyword we will discuss, discuss later. Okay, then moving on next is what is a method prototype and what is a method signature? We need to understand what is a method prototype and what is a method signature here. Now, the firstly, what is method prototype? Now, it is a first line of function definition or method definition. So that means whenever we define a function, the first line which we write is a method prototype and it tells about the return type of the method, the number and the type of arguments or parameters. Okay, so if you see this example here, void sum int a comma int b. So here what is the return type of the method? It is void. What is the name of the method? Sum. And how many parameters are we passing here? We are passing two parameters. And what is the data type of each parameter? It is int. Okay. So this is method prototype. So method prototype tells us about the return type of the method, the number of parameters, that means two parameters and the data type, type of 
our cubensal parameters. That means we are passing int, comma int, two parameters of int type. So this is method prototype. On the other hand, what is method signature? It refers to the number and the type of arguments. So that means a method signature only talks about this part, this part. Okay. So you know it only tells us about the total number of parameters or arguments passed and the type of parameter. It does not talk about this return type. So in other words, we can say that a method prototype is equal to return type plus method signature. Or method signature is a part of method prototype. Why? Because method Method prototype includes return type plus this information, whereas method signature includes only involves only this information. So I've just given you a, a hack here so that you can learn what is a method prototype. So it is return type that means plus method signature or method signature is part of method prototype. Okay, this difference uh, is very important. It has come um, like in uh, many years. Uh, it has come. This this question has come. Okay, so now moving on. Mm, next is uh, what are static methods and what are non-static methods. So uh, static methods are also known as class methods and they are called or invoked using class name. Whereas uh, non-static methods are known as instance methods and they are called or invoked using the object name. So just to um, explain you, uh, I've written a small uh, like program here and uh, we have a class test and we have declared a method static method. So whenever you write um, a static, as I told you previously, is a modifier. So uh, we have written static, then void, then show. Okay, so this makes show a static method and this is a non-static method because we do not have static keyword in front of it. Now, how do we call this? So static methods are called class methods. So we have to call them using the class name. So if you have to call this show method, you will use a class name, which is test dot method name here. Okay, uh, one thing is uh, here we need to put uh, the closing brackets also because when we are calling the method, we need to have the closing parenthesis. Okay. So this is like this. And similarly, uh, here, this uh, non-static method sum. So if you have to call the sum method, it is a non-static method. So we will have to call it using object. So we will create an object of the class test. So test ob is equal to new test. This we have learned in the previous uh, videos how to create an object. And now to call this method, we will say ob. ob is the name of the object dot method name. So that's the difference between static and non-static method. Moving on, next question, what is the use of void? Now, a method that does not return any value when its return type is void. So when the return type is void, a method will not return any value. And methods having void as return type can't be used in expression or assignment statement. Let's understand this. So firstly, if you see, we have declared a method here, void sum, and it takes how many uh, parameters? Two parameters. Now, because the return type of the method is void, we cannot use it in an expression. So if I write something like this, c is equal to sum, you know, we have to pass two parameters here, seven comma eight. So that would be wrong because some method does not return any value. So it cannot be used in an assignment statement or in an expression like this. Okay. Next is how is a method called or invoked? So for that, uh, let us uh, see this, uh, go through this program and we'll understand through this program, how do we call a method or how do we invoke a method? So if you see, uh, see here, we, uh, we have created a class called test and within the class, I have a static method. Uh, which uh, returns a float value. The, the name of the method is cube and the name of the method is cube and it takes a float parameter. Okay, one. And what it is doing is it is doing the cube of this um, parameter and then it is returning the cube. Okay, the, which is stored in n. Now we are making so this is a static method which we have defined in the class and we are going to make a call to this method. So how do we call or invoke a method? So if you, we make another method and from here we have to make a call to this method. So because it is a static method, static methods are either called using the class name, okay, or non-static methods are called using object name. So here it is a static method which is called from within the class. So we are not using a class name here. So we're simply making a call like when you make a call. So this is uh, the method or the function call. So you just write the name of the function and you have to pass the parameter. So you have to pass because it is receiving a float parameter. So we have to pass a float value. So we've written a 4.5 f. This is a float value. So this is how we are basically what you need to understand is this is a method call and this is a method definition. Okay. So the point here is that uh, this is just an explanation of this kind of program. You will need not, I will not, uh, most probably will not come in the exam. And this is only uh, 
just to explain you the difference between a float a formal parameter and an action parameter that I've written this program so that you understand what is a method call. So here we're making a call to the method. This is a method calling statement. So when we call a method, control goes from here, from this part of the program to this part of the program. Okay. So here 4.5f will be passed to this uh, variable a. Okay. So the value 4.5 will go to this variable a. So the value of a is now 4.5 f. Okay. Now, uh, what it, so what is a, a formal parameter? Formal parameters appear in the method definition. So here a is a formal parameter and action parameters, they appear in the method call statement. So this is a method call statement. So v 4.5 is an action parameter. Now the data type of each parameter, that means the formal parameter is specified. So if you see formal parameter, we have specified the data type. Whereas the data type of the actual parameters is not specified. So when you have uh, making uh, when you're passing the actual parameter you don't write int you just pass the value whatever is that value float value or int value so here 4.5 is an actual parameter so that is what that that is what we are trying to understand here the difference between a formal parameter and actual parameter and how our methods called so when we call a method we just write the name of the method followed by parameters passing the parameters if there are any okay that is a method call now in the next we'll see uh, what are two ways of invoking a function or this is these are the two ways of invoking or calling a function whereas previously we were just understanding how a method or a function is called so what are the two ways of invoking or calling a function so that is call by value and call by reference so this question is very important what are the two ways of invoking or calling a function so call by value is also known as pass by value call by reference is also known as pass by reference now the functions uh, the called function creates its own copy of the parameters that are passed in call by value and whereas the called function receives a reference to the original data any changes that take place remain in the work copy and are not reflected in the original data any changes that take place are reflected in the original data. And the last point, all the primitive data types are passed by value and all the reference data types. What are reference data types? Objects, arrays, strings are passed by reference. Okay, so this is what you need to remember here. Only I think the difference you need to understand call by value and call by reference. And this question is important mm -hmm. from the point of view of difference between the two. Okay, so in call by value, so in the previous example which we discussed, we were passing a, this is a call by value because we are passing a value here which is going to A. So if you make any changes in the A, it will not be reflected here. 4.5 will remain 4.5. So that is what we are trying to make the point. Okay, now moving on. What is a return statement? It is used to terminate a method as it causes an immediate exit from the method. And it is used to return a value to the calling code. A method can have many return statements, but only one of them will get executed and a method can return only one value. So here we need to understand this point that a method can return only one value, but at the same time it can have many return statements. Okay, so we'll take up this um, program. So here if you see this method, we have this program here wherein we have three return statements if x is greater than 1000 it returns 100 else if x is greater than 700 it returns 70 else if else it returns 10. so that means we can have multiple return statements as we discussed earlier but only one of them will get executed so the value of x will either be greater than 1000 or it will be greater than 700 okay or uh, else it returns this so in this case we just need to you know have another here uh, limit here logical operator because it has to be greater than 700 and uh, maybe you know greater than 700 and less than equal to less than 1000 okay so it, anyways that is not the point the point is that we can have multiple return statements but only one of them will get executed so that means a function can have multiple return statements but it will return only one value because only one ret return statement gets executed okay now the next what are pure methods and what are impure methods? So uh, they do not change the state of their parameters. The ones which do not change the state of their parameters are um, pure methods and the ones which change the state of their parameters are impure methods. Okay, so uh, now we have, uh, I think we're ready to take up a few questions and here, uh, let's see. First is void average int x int y int z int and double d so how many parameters are we passing here so we are passing four parameters here what is the return type of this function it is void and what is the name of this method abg now in the second question can you tell what is the error what is the mistake here so if you see int total 
int a comma b comma c so the mistake here is we are passing three parameters but the data type of each parameter has to be specified whereas we have only specified the data type of the first parameter int a so we need to correct it by writing int b comma int c okay now third question name the two types of methods that you can write in a class now the two types of methods that we can write in a class are static methods and non-static methods static methods are also called class methods and non-static methods are also called instance methods now again uh, the next question is very important write the prototype of a function check which takes an integer argument and returns a character value here I have underlined this check because they have given us the name of the function. So that means you have to create a prototype whereas the name where the name of the function would be check, which takes an integer argument and returns a character. I want that you should try it and we will discuss the answer a little later. And again, the next is write the prototype of a function. The name of the function is given as POS POS cat. Okay. And which takes a string argument and a character argument and returns an integer value. So if you've done, so let's uh, discuss the answers here. So the answer would be for the first one, uh, the question was write a prototype of a function check, which takes an inter, uh, integer argument and returns a character. So it takes an, in, uh, the, it returns a character. So the return type is character, char, not character. The name of the function is given to us as check and it takes an integer argument. So we've written int a. Now the second function returns an integer value. So the return type would be int. The name of the function was given to us and it takes a string argument and a character argument. For string argument, we would write string S capital and you can give any name to the string object and it takes a character argument. So we would write char and give any name. So this is the function prototype. So this is how these questions can be done. And we will in the next video, we will discuss a few more topics related to methods and functions. And if you like the video, please don't forget to click on the bell icon and do subscribe to the channel eStudy.in and thanks for watching.